And good day, wherever you may be in our viewing audience. My name is Mr. E, and well, this is episode number two of Gathering Steam, where we talk about all things Steam, which are Steam is science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math, all put together in a fun and engaging curriculum where the students really drive inquiry and questioning and we implement a project-based learning model to learn on their own in their own special way guided by facilitators. It's a wonderfully dynamic educational model that really gets results and we are glad to be able to share with you. We have four sessions with you over the next few weeks and we're very glad to share with you what is possible through STEAM education. Today, we have with us again, my friends from Gum Springs Community Center, Mr. Earl and Mr. Israel. What is going on there, gents? How are we doing today? Let's get started. Say again? It's the show on the road. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so today what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk with you guys about the very basic fundamentals of digital media production. That is uh, an encompassing uh, discipline which details and deals with math and science and art all combined to deliver content like what you're seeing here through these new virtual technologies, through video, through webcasting. And we're gonna end up going over the very basics of what does it take to get a good quality home digital studio going. How many of you guys out there have a favorite YouTuber that you look at and you say, you know what? I want to do a YouTube show like that. Raise your hands. I'll raise, I'll raise my hand. Look at that. I look at that. YouTube fame. Israel wants YouTube fame. I want to be YouTube famous, but there's a there's a lot of obstacles I feel sometimes, and I feel like there could be there are some myths about what is. Uh, you know what we can do to open up a YouTube channel. I always uh, ask my own children if they want to have their own channels, and they, they always say yes, but they never do anything about it. So, Mr. Sam, what, what do you think somebody can can do to start a YouTube channel? Well, funny that you ask, sir. That's what we have on store today. So, what we're gonna do from my uh, from my virtual studio here, we're gonna go over the basics of what it takes to get started with good quality digital production and all of the basic steps, understanding where you are as a young person. You, um, you know, money is going to be a, and funding for the con for the quality gear that you may need is going to be important. But more than that, you know, what's really important is knowing how to use the gear that you have. Pretty much everybody out there has a cell phone that they can utilize. There's basic equipment that you can use to get good quality results. And that's some of what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna move rather fast and I want you guys to take some notes, all right? So here we go. Let's get started with our presentation. This is my, di my digital mixer, by the way, pretty cool. And if you're interested in what you're seeing, guys, realize we're going to be moving very quickly here. And if you like what you're seeing and you want to engage further, get in contact with me or Mr. Israel or anybody here at NCS, and we can hook you up with one of our Tech 10, tech, 10 tech centers where you can learn these technologies hands-on. Pretty cool stuff. So let's get started with the plan today. STEAM technology, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, all integrated. And today, of course, the rules are as usual. Be respectful of others, listen, learn, and have fun, engage, speak up. No vulgarity or inappropriate behavior. Keep your microphone muted when you are not speaking and raise your hand if you wish to speak. Now, right now, keep your hands down because I am gonna blaze through at lightning speed this presentation to give you the fundamental knowledge that you need to really get going on your digital endeavors but there's a lot more to learn each one of these little content areas that i touch on for a few seconds at a time here really could be a whole college course you can spend years and people do spend years studying these if you want to be an engineer for instance a sound engineer so much goes into this guys i've been doing this for 30 years which is how i'm able to do what it is that i'm doing right here from my little studio that's about nine by nine square believe it or not it's crazy this is all virtual so i'm hoping you get the digital bug like i have and that you get excited about what's possible 
and explore more on your own and join us at our Clubhouse Network to do some hands-on work. So that said, let's go ahead and move forward with our presentation. All right, building a home studio and the basics of audio. Your learning objectives today. We want you to come away with being able to demonstrate a working knowledge of the basics of home studio production, specifically audio and effective and proper use of microphones. Now, write these down. These are some of the key takeaways. Meaning in education, what does that mean? The instructor says, this is your objective. These are key points. I'm giving you a hint, 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 hint. This is what I want you to be able to take away. And at the end, when we said we're gonna get into Kahoot, we're gonna test your knowledge and we're gonna see if it indeed you were paying attention and absorbing the knowledge and if my instruction was actually effective. We're gonna take a look at that. What do I want you to take away with? I want you to come away with. Understanding what the key components are of building a quality home digital media studio. You're gonna find out a little bit more about that. Take notes and understand and be able to say these are the components and identify them. What are the main types of microphones that you have available at the level that you're at for use in your own home studio? What are the main differences and the uses of each of those microphones? That's where we're gonna get technical and we're gonna bring science into the picture. Know the following terms. Again, write this down, write this down, write this down. I want you to understand gain, signal chain, clipping, volume, and frequency range. Okay, we'll take a second there. Gain, signal chain, clipping, volume, and frequency range. All right, as well as the types of microphones. So you're gonna need to take notes. Everybody raise your hand, tell me. Do y'all have notes? Ready to take notes? Raise your hand if you're ready to take notes. One, two, three, four. Five, there you go, five out of 46. Keep on going, that's awesome, kids. So we have very interested students, would you not say, Israel, because they're coming to class prepared to do some learning today. That's pretty cool. Your, your mic is muted, brother. I said, I'm ready. There you go, awesome. All right, go. all right, here we go, here we go. Let's go ahead and continue with our presentation. Now, this is where we, this is where we, no pun intended, but actually pun intended. This is where we pick up steam. Get it? Ha, 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 I made it funny. All right, here we go. Uh, all right, so what's possible with digital media? As we said, when we out, when we, when my, my first question to you guys was, how many of you guys want to be famous YouTubers? And Israel said, I want to be YouTube famous. Well, what else can you do with digital media? Let's put this out to the crew. In... Uh, well, you can create television style productions, right? You You're can, working radio. Yeah, you can have radio, right? Israel, you want to go through some of these? You can work in radio. Uh, you can uh, be a music producer. Music producer, and absolutely. Work in entertainment, absolutely. You can turn your movie. website. Say that again, Earl. We work in the movie industry. We can work in the movie industry, absolutely. You can work in radio, you can work in TV, you can turn your blog or your website or your network into a television network online using these technologies. You can build community partnerships and learn to make friends online and motivate and teach and inspire others, which is something I want you all to write this down. You have a responsibility to be responsible to the rest of the world and your immediate community by using the talents that you were given encoded in your DNA to make your world a better place. And you can use digital media to do so. So I hope that you are excited about not just making media content for the sake of having fun, but making media content for the sake of making your world a better place. So before you get started in wanting to, to build a quality, high quality digital media production studio, you gotta check your motivations. This is what I want you to think about, okay? Why do I want to publish digital content? What's, what's driving me? Why do I want to do this? What will I do with the content that I publish, right? Am I just going to do little viral videos? Am I going to do a whole YouTube channel? 
Um, am I going to try to monetize it, right? Do I want to make money from the content or monetize? Little typo there. Sorry about that. Who do I want to reach with my content? That would be our audience. What, you know, who do I want to reach and go reach out to and inspire, right? So what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and open up the chat now to everybody. And I would like for you guys to go ahead and post your messages and say how many of you out there would like to have a YouTube channel that is monetized and you can make money on YouTube? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Me, me. Check it out. Ah, Simona says, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I do, but it's a full-time job. Yeah, I'll tell you, it can be. There's no doubt about it. It can be a lot of work. But here's what's cool. Once you get the understanding of these technologies, like me, this is what I do. This is my living. It's my hobby. Why? Because I love it. You know, a lot of people say to me, Mr. E, you work too much. And I'm saying, well, eh, this isn't work. This is fun. So somehow or another, after years and years and years of this experience, I've been able to build a career on doing just this. Exciting stuff. What else can you do with it? Israel mentioned audio production. Maybe you want to be a music producer. So ultimately, what I want you guys to think about here is look in the mirror today and ask yourself when you're done with this, how can you use these skills and ask these questions about yourself in terms of your potential career pathway? So to recap the intro to STEAM last week in the project-based learning model, as we move into talking about audio, I want you guys to realize that the basic production steps were the same for video production as well as audio production, the same as the project-based um, steps that we talked about last week. Inquiry, asking questions, taking an inventory of your resources, doing your production, re editing, revising, getting feedback, and publishing. So if you want to be a podcaster, you not only have to build a podcast studio, but you have to engage in the planning process, the production process, the post-production or polishing it up, and then publishing it ultimately and finding a platform that's going to work for you. It's the same steps if you want to do broadcasting like what you're seeing here. Me in my digital studio, these are the same steps. Planning, production, post-production, and then publishing through various aspects of the internet or your local television network or television stations. Lots of different ways that you can publish your content in today's digital age. Let's move along. So again, look in the mirror and ask the question. This is what I want you to think about. Do I need this, right? So when we talk about the elements of a home studio, okay, I'm sitting here on a green screen with a really nice studio around me and you're gonna see some of the gear here that I've accumulated over the years. But you gotta ask yourself for what it is that you want to do. Ask yourself, do you need this type of equipment or the software or other resources to accomplish your goal. So the first step is finding out what your goal is. What is it you want to accomplish? Do you think you might need this? What is this that we're looking at up here, guys, on the screen? Can anybody tell me what that is? Pop it in the chat. It's a green screen setup, exactly. It is a green screen setup and and the light that you, the lights that you need to be able to create this effect. So if I open up my camera right here and I go to my my uh, green screen, for instance, and I turn off the color key, you can see the green screen behind me. I turn it on, all of a sudden I'm in my virtual studio. So for what I am doing in this application, I needed a proper green screen setup. Let's go take a look and see. Do you think you would need this in your home studio? What does that look like to you guys, guys? What's that look like to you? Do you think it's necessary? That looks like a gimbal. There is a, it's a camera stabilization system. There is a camera there. There is digital light. There is a monitor, right? 
So again, if you're going to go out and you're going to film in the fa in the field, you're going to need that kind of content or that kind of equipment. Maybe you're not if you're going to be working only from your home podcasting studio. So again, you got to think about your goals. Do you need this type of equipment, software, and other resources like Israel has shown us there? Israel, what do you have there and how did that help you in your endeavors for what we're doing through VIP this summer? So I have something called a uh, uh Osmo Mobile 3 combo. It's a gimbal that it helps you stabilize the picture so it's not shaky mm -hmm. and it won't and um, it will make it easier for you to uh, to film. Uh, I've this has helped me. It's it's a little expensive, but uh, if you save money, you could probably uh, get one at the end of the summer. You know, you just have to do extra chores at, around the house. Um, this, uh, this device is uh, is very practical and Plus, uh, you can get it anywhere. Absolutely, and, and understand too that there are more affordable ones than the one you bought because we know that Israel is made of money and he can buy the top of the line of anything. Why? Because he works hard, kids, and he's got a good work ethic and he goes out there and has a wonderful dynamic career, enabling him to be able to make the money that he needs to be able to buy the equipment that he wants. But you know what? Some of us aren't in that situation. Maybe you don't have the expendable cash to be able to buy the top of the line so that's why research skills are so important you can find a gimbal that will serve your needs if that is what you need and you can find one that you can most likely afford so you just got to be able to dig in and know what you're looking for and find the solution for what it is that you need what is Very this true. what Very is true. this right here let's take a look at this what's that look like to you guys Oh, Taryn, I see your name is still spelled wrong. I think you might have to go into your profile and fix that. Thank you for that note. So why do I need this? Israel, what is that? And I'll give you a hint because we're talking about audio and microphones today. What does that look that like to is, you? That is a microphone. That, I think that's a, a unidirectional microphone, right? Like it only captures the, the, the sound in front of you. Nope. Or that kind of nope. We're gonna get like we're gonna get into a quiz here in a little bit. That is indeed a studio microphone. Hint, hint, hint. That is a large diaphragm microphone with a shock mount and a windscreen filter. You want that mic, says John. Legit. Every YouTuber has that. Well, not every YouTuber, but the ones that want good quality audio have something like this. And we're gonna show you why today. There it is. There, have, little on-camera microphone. Different. We're going to get into the differences of the microphones here very shortly. So hang in there with me. Seems like you all are excited, and I am excited as well about what's possible. Do you need this? Building a home studio and audio basics. Do I need this? When you're identifying equipment, software, and other resources, what does this look like to you guys? Do you think you might need it for your home studio? You guys in the chat, tell me what you think that is. And Israel, tell me what you think it is, and would you need it for what it is that you want to do in your home studio? Well, that looks like, uh, let's see, that's a digital mixer, a video mixer, right? Isn't that what it is? That is a digital, yep, that is a digital production suite like what I'm using here to produce my live television show. There's different brands. How much things we call Mr. Uh, Sam? How much does what? How much of those things would it cost? Is well, very it, it depends on the software. You can buy like OBS, um, Open Broadcast System, is a free solution that you can download and use. Can do the basics of what I can do here with green screen, pretty decent quality, mixing audio and video in real time. What I'm using here is a software solution called vMix, which would run you anywhere from 350 bucks to the basic pro version to um, upwards of $1,500 to be able to do um, this times, you know, on, on uh, exponentially more powerful. So um, really, it's just like anything. You get what you pay for. And uh, But right now, digital production tools are getting cheaper and definitely more powerful. So again, check your motivation and ask your question. Do you need what you think you need to accomplish the goals that you think you have? Do I need this? What is that, guys? Put that in the chat. Do you money. need this? I want to be a gamer and an animator. Money, 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 moolah, cash. That's a big roll of the cash. If indeed you want to build a home studio, generally speaking, you're going to need some cash. So you got to go out there. You got to work in one way or another. Come up with some funding. 
and buy some of the equipment that you might need. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't get started though with what you have because you can. There's all kinds of cool stuff that you can do with equipment that you probably have right now. So, what equipment do I currently have access to? All right, so for audio and video, if you wanna build a good quality studio, this is what you are going to need. A camera, quality camera, or whatever you can afford. A microphone, same thing, quality or whatever it is you can afford. Cabling to hook all this stuff together. Lighting, proper lighting, because without proper lighting, you just don't look as good, right? Um, mixer, some sort of interface between your computer and your software that, or your, your microphone and your software that you're using. And to do proper audio, which we're going to talk about today, you really need a DAW. Anybody know what a DAW is? Put it in the room. It's an acronym. The big letters stand for something. What do you think that is? DAW. Taryn says, I don't know. Sabella says, no. I don't know. No. That stands for Digital Audio Workstation. So as we get into talking about audio here, very, very important that you recognize these terms so you know what you're talking about. A digital audio workstation is the computer and the editing software that allows you to capture audio and edit it up and use it for a variety of different purposes. So again, as you're growing your podcasting or your television endeavors, you really need to focus on the big picture. Are you gonna need to create graphics, lower third graphics, title slates, logos, branding? Uh, motion graphics, like I, like you saw in my intro video. Uh, are you gonna need business cards and flyers to promote yourself? And there's some software solutions there. Again, down the road, guys, this would be a whole course in and of itself. Studio basic elements. You, how do you create presentations, right? And 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 uh, scripts and write scripts and use uh, story overlays and creating proposals and and uh, teleprompter to be able to engage with your audience without looking like you're looking off to the side reading something, right? These are all advanced tools that you can use to create a good high quality on time con online content. Then of course, there's the internet. Well, on the web, you're gonna need to be able to produce engaging web content and leveraging the power of social media you're going to need a streaming service, YouTube, web, per, or YouTube, uh, Facebook, Periscope, whatever. Hosting, email, and communications tools like what we're using here with Blackboard. There's Zoom, of course, Skype, all kinds of cool tools that you can use. Again, that's a topic for another show. For right now, where do you start? How many of you know what that is? Put it in the chat. What's that look like to you guys? You don't know, yeah, it's a camera. Basic webcam. How many of you guys out there in the chat room have a webcam right now? Excellent, then what I am gonna do, if you have a webcam, I am now going to turn on video. So you can now share your webcam. And I don't have your audio yet though, because I want you to stay muted. But if you want to, you can go ahead and join us in the room and share your webcam because we would love to see your smiling faces. Let's go ahead and see who's in the room with us. Turn your webcam on if you got it. It's okay if you don't want to. It's okay, we're not forcing you, but if you would like to and say hello, we would love to see you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move along here. Let's go ahead and turn the chat back on so I can read our responses. Let's keep moving here. And this is indeed, as we said- There you go, there's somebody there. There's somebody hey. there. Hey, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Thank you for joining How us. Doing? Okay. All right, let's go ahead and move along here in our presentation. What about this? What's this look like to you guys? And how can that help you in your endeavors? Put it in the chat. It looks like a uh, iPhone. It's a phone, right. Can you use that for streaming? Yes or no? That's what I use. Absolutely. My phone. Absolutely. Excellent. If you if so, you go to NCS Connects, you'll see all the videos reloaded and some of those were shot on an iPhone. Absolutely. Now, so what about this? What is this? Here we have a laptop, that right? It's a computer or a tablet. 
and some headphones. Do you think that might come in handy for you to get started doing webcasting and starting a podcast? I'm going to grab Most something definitely. here. I'm going to grab my phone, actually, to demonstrate something to you. This is my Android phone. I'm going to show you some pretty cool stuff today. All right, so we got to get moving along here. There's a lot of information that we're throwing at you. Now we're going to get into the fun stuff. Let's talk about what audio is. Audio is sound. It, it, it is a noun as defined by Merriam-Webster Dictionary sound, especially when recorded, transmitted, or reproduced. The machine can retrieve and play audio from a CD-ROM, for instance. So we have this young man here screaming into his microphone. Then we have a mixer and we have another microphone and headphones set up. How many of you guys would like to have a studio like that? Check that out. Digital studio, high end for high end audio, right? Of course, but that want. costs bucks. Okay, so before we get moving forward, we're gonna put our scientist hat on and our, we're gonna learn a little bit about physiology. What is sound and how does it work? First off, I want you, before we get into microphones, think about the human ear. What is the human ear? How does it work? Sound waves are funneled into the ear, right? By the pina. Then the vibrations go through the canal. They vibrate in your eardrum. These vibrations make the bones inside your ear vibrate. Then the vibrations are turned into an electrical signal via your nerves at the cochlea. And that electrical signal is then sent to the brain for translation. This is how the human ear hears. So when we talk about microphones, whether they are shotgun style microphones, dynamic handheld microphones, or lapel microphones that you put on your lapel, whatever the microphone may be, it's basically a microphone is an electronic version of the human ear. So in the human ear, you have an element that vibrates with sound, right? That's your eardrum. Inside your microphone, if I take this apart, here you have a plate that vibrates and sends that vibration to a series of electrical coils that are wrapped around a magnet. And in this dynamic microphone, that magnet then translates the signal through wire into an electrical signal which goes into a mixer and then is recorded in the form of a sound wave. Then we have a different kind of microphone which is called an electric microphone or a transducer microphone that uses a battery and it is a different kind of circuit. The element is in here, still works basically the same in that you have a plate that vibrates when sound hits it, but it's translated in a different circuit electronic circuit that needs power. We're going to talk about that when we get to the different types of microphones. Okay, home experiment. Israel, you have the experiment set up there or do we not have that? Sorry, sir, I do not have no it. No worries at all. Here's what we want you guys to do. You can take a look at this online. Look up sound and volume vibration science experiment and you can see this in action. You take a radio or a speaker, CD player, whatever, a large glass bowl and then plastic wrap and a rubber band and some pieces of tissue paper. And if you put the, the rubber band around the bowl and put the tissue paper on, the, on there, you're gonna see in action how sound vibrates physical matter and, the, and imagine that those little particles or those little pieces of paper are nerve impulses, or in the case of a microphone, electrical impulses, which then go to a computer or in the human physiology, the computer would be your brain. So I'm gonna play for you guys. You, got, you guys can do that experiment on your own. I'm gonna, expo I'm gonna play for you a short video, which is really gonna blow your mind, how sound actually affects matter. And this is what I want you to think about. One of the things I want you to think about when you take away today.
Now, what he's doing there is he's applying, he's applying electrical impulse at a certain frequency and the pitch of the tone, low pitch or high pitch, watch what it does to the salt on the metal plate. That is 1,033 hertz, which is right around the range of the human voice. That's 1,800 hertz, again, around the range of the human voice. 2,000 as well. Now we're gonna get into the ultra high frequencies, what we call the treble end, the high end of the spectrum. crazy stuff. Now I can go ahead and provide that for you or you can look it up online yourself. Amazing resonance experiment. There's so many cool things that sound can do guys and I want you to think about that as you leave this today and it's a powerful medium absolutely to be able to get your message across and to be able to move the human emotion. How many of you guys have a favorite band? Put it in the put put your favorite band in the chat. Hey, hey, Mr. Sam, uh, what do you think we can let him uh, talk for a little bit and see if they can uh, say it out loud? What do you think about that idea? I love that idea. Let's go ahead and open up the audio and let's go ahead and share audio for our first time. I love it. Shout Hello. out, shout let's out your favorite band. You guys go ahead and do it. Let's go. Who's your favorite band? All right, you have a favorite band, guys? Yeah. Okay, now, here, we're going to experiment with something. This is what I want you to do. Raise your hand if you have a favorite band, and I want you to speak into the microphone two different ways. One way where you're far back from the microphone, and one where you're really, really, really up close to the microphone. And I want, I want you guys to really pay attention to the difference in how the audio sounds when somebody is up close versus far back. So raise your hand, who has who has a, John, go ahead. If you wanna yeah. speak into the microphone, tell us your favorite band and make a choice whether you're gonna speak from far back or close up, go ahead. Okay. Al Sabaton. Now, I want you to get up close to your microphone, or as they say in the industry, eat the mic, <laughs> right? Like if I were screaming It'll in a metal work. band or something. There you go. Yeah. Get up close to the microphone. Now say that again, real close to your mic. Okay. I don't know where my mic is. It's on your webcam. It's in the middle of it. It's in the webcam. In the it's same in the area. Webcam. There you go. It's like did you, history or something. Did you notice the difference from when he was far back versus when he was very far or very close up? Anybody else want to raise their hand? Anybody else want to thing, demonstrate audio? Okay, we'll go ahead and move along here. That'll work. Thank you so much for showing that. And I wanted to point that out because, now what I want you to do again, uh, sir, is again, realizing that you're working from a standard consumer level webcam, but you notice the difference when you go back. So a lot of people say, you know, how many times do you watch YouTube videos, right? And you watch and you're listening to it and you're like, I can hear the guy behind the camera better than I can in front of the camera, right? Why? Because they're yeah. utilizing an on-camera, you know, pretty basic microphone that's built into the camera or in their phone, but they're not using it properly, so they're not getting good quality audio. And we just saw that with the webcam. So to be able to get good quality audio, you want to be able to use your gear correctly, speak into the microphone and learn what we call proper microphone technique. And that is going to give you good quality all the way around, no matter what gear you're working on. 
So I'm going to go ahead and move along with our presentation here. Keep that in mind as you're demonstrating and trying these things on your own with your own YouTube channels or whatever endeavors you have. So let's talk about what digital audio is. As we said, whenever you a, um, a signal goes into a microphone, right? We speak, the air around us moves in a wave, goes into the microphone, and then it is translated into what we call a digital wave form, which looks like this up here that you're seeing. And then you can capture that on a computer and translate it and edit it and apply effects to it and do all kinds of cool stuff with it once you have it in digital form. The key is getting good quality raw audio with that. How do we do that? Well, let's take a look at a digital audio workstation. Here we go. Now, before we do this, I want you guys to go to Kahoot. Is it Kahoot.it? If you have access, go ahead to Kahoot IT. And I am going to turn this on for you guys. And we're going to go ahead and do our room. There is your code, 7746315. Seven seven four six three one five. Let's see who gets in the room. Hey Levi, thank you for joining us today. You like that funk music? Yeah. All right, somebody tell me, Mister E, please don't dance on camera. Yeah, that's kind of funky. You talked about bass, right, Israel? Right. <laughs> There we go. All right, in the interest of time, let's get a few more people in there. We got Emery, we got Bismarck, we got Leyland, we got Shana, we got uh, Taryn, we got Alex. Yeah, let's go ahead and play this game. Here is what we want to know. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. Four questions. What very important component is missing from this signal chain? We have input, we have the interface, and we have the microphone that is going into the mixer. The mixer is going into the computer. Then what? What's missing? An input device or an output device? All right, let's take a look here. 11 people said what is missing is the input device. Seven said the output device. Very well, I would have to say, let's pay attention to this. If we're talking about, I was going to say very good, but actually, um, well, it's pretty balanced. We're close, but, you know, as they say. Uh, try, try again. Let's go back to my, whoa, there we go. All right, let's take a look at these results here. What are we talking about? When we talk about our signal chain, our microphone is the first point of contact, right? So we have our microphone that we're speaking into. Then we have, I'm trying to get mine here. My microphone is off camera. We have our microphone we're speaking into. Then the signal goes from the microphone into an audio interface or a mixer. Then it goes from the interface into the processing unit, which would be your computer or your iPad, or if we're using our cell phone with an external mic like, like uh, Israel showed you, right? So what is missing is the output. What is the output? Well, that would be what is missing from the DAW? Output, speakers or the headphones. So you can actually hear the signal that is being translated. So let's talk very briefly about microphones. We may need to pick this up on another day because we got a lot to cover here. Um, but I'm gonna breeze through this and see what I can give you. All right, so Alex is in the lead on Kahoot with 930 points. Let's see what we can do. And if Mr. Tippins, can we go a little bit after uh, 145? Yeah, you could probably go five or probably no more than 10 minutes. Yet. All right. Awesome. Well, then we're going to move at super hyperspeed then. Let's take a look at microphones and see what you guys can do to write down your knowledge of microphones. And we'll test you. 
A microphone is a device that contains circuitry that picks up sound waves from the air, as we said, or through objects. Transducer microphones can sit on a physical object and actually pick up the vibrations from that. Some conference call microphones, guitar microphones can be transducers. They actually pick up the resonance from the wood and translate it. So it doesn't have to just be audio coming through the air. It is then translated to a signal, as we said, called a waveform. There are different types of pickup patterns. Omnidirectional, meaning this microphone would pick up sound no matter where I'm speaking around it. So just like a ball of, of sound picking upping, right? <laughs> 360 degrees, omnidirectional, all around. No matter how I hold the mic, it's going to sound the same. Bidirectional would be meaning like this microphone here, which is my studio microphone. This microphone is bidirectional. This picks up sound from the plate in the front and the plate in the back. Off to the side, it would be off axis and it wouldn't pick up as clear of a sound. Cardioid microphones, this is a different type of pickup pattern where it picks up like a heart-shaped pattern right around the front of the plate. Then we have what Israel was talking about earlier, a shotgun mic. This is called a shotgun mic for a reason because it is fluted like the barrel of a shotgun might be and that element is on the tip that is the plate that vibrates the shotgun mic then these ribs here will filter out sound from the sides and the back so you can see the pickup pattern on a shotgun mic is very narrow like a cone imagine a cone coming out from from this right so that's why you see this in television production and in movie production where it's hanging over it's hanging over the person talking just out of the frame and it goes back and forth because it's very unidirectional if it's pointing at me it's going to capture what's coming out of my mouth crystal clear if it's then pointed slightly away these ribs are going to break up those sound waves and it's not going to be as crystal clear. The higher quality shotgun microphone that you buy, you can buy a $5,000 professional shotgun mic that's three feet long like they use in the movies. And that is going to do a better job at filtering sound than say this $100 microphone. But you can still get into getting decent quality gear for a reasonable amount of money. All right, let's go and talk about the different kinds of microphones now that we know how they pick up. Main styles of microphones, a lavalier mic is a microphone that gets attached to a lapel, right? You see this done in news. You have a large diaphragm studio microphones like I'm showing you here. You have handheld style microphones and you have shotgun style microphones. These are different styles for different applications. We're going to talk a little bit about those. The condenser microphone versus the dynamic microphone. These are two different terms that refer to different ways that microphones are built and what their function might be. They are both types of microphones that have potential pros and cons, meaning they're not right for every application. Dynamic mics are often used they're in a more in a situation where they need to be more durable. That's why you see rock stars out there on on stage and they're swinging their microphone around and the roadies are taking the microphone and they're hammer nails in before the show. These things are built to last and they're rugged, but and they can handle high volume, but they don't necessarily provide you with the best quality audio. Condenser microphones like this studio is much more fragile and is going to give you much higher quality sound and is generally used in more controlled situations such as studios or on sets of TV shows or movies. So condensers, there's various types of condensers and various styles as we said. You can have a shotgun style condenser. You can also have a handheld style condenser or a studio style condenser, but they all need power. It is an electrical circuit that does the work of translating the vibration to sound. They're very sensitive and they can be very fragile. 
The large diaphragm studio condenser has a large diaphragm, just as it says. The plate in here is actually big. This one is one full inch, which gives you high quality frequency response from the low end of the bass and the voice to the high end of the treble. You're capturing a lot more of those frequencies, so it sounds much more natural. These microphones are also very susceptible to vibration which is why you see them in shock mounts. So if somebody kicks, walks across the room or kicks this mic stand, that microphone is isolated in a series of rubber bands and the shock wave doesn't go up through the stand into the microphone and you don't hear it. Shotgun microphones are built for the field. As I said, newscasting, gathering out in the field, smaller diaphragm in the center of the microphone is gonna give you a smaller frequency response, but they still sound pretty good. They're generally used in TV and in movie production, and they're very unidirectional, as I said, as it, fig it filters out ambient sound or sound that is outside around you. Pencil microphones are built for studios and concert use. Again, small diaphragm. They are used in workflow situations, like maybe a talkback mic in a studio, the engineer to be able to talk to the people that are up on stage that are doing sound mixing, or in live recording. So for instance, in, in a, uh, uh, an orchestra, maybe you want to capture the subtleties of a violinist and you want to have a pencil mic over top of them. In live mixing, pencil mics can be used to capture the subtleties of a cymbal of, of a drummer. Can be unidirectional or any other pattern, meaning, you can pick up all around or you can get pencil mics that are very, uh, very narrow focused. Dynamic microphones, they come in, di again, different styles. You can have, like Israel held up what looked like a shotgun mic. Israel, hold that back up again, if you would. Let me see if he's in the room. Are you in the room? Uh, there he is. Yeah, there's our mic. It looks like a shotgun mic, but it's not a shotgun mic. That is a dynamic microphone that does not run on power. So it's, and it has a different circuitry inside. They're rougher, rougher audio, still usable, and it gives you high, or it can handle high volume without distorting. Handheld microphones are best for live concerts. They're extremely tough and they can have multiple pickup patterns. Lavalier microphones are much more sensitive, go on the lapel of your announcer and they're used in TV news and broadcasting, typically can be wireless and have multiple pickup patterns as well. So let's test your knowledge if you guys would. Let's go back to Kahoot and let's take a look and see who understands microphones. So we're gonna go back to Kahoot to our next question. Here we go. What microphone would you use in this situation? You wanna record this fellow playing the flute. Which microphone would you use? A large diaphragm condenser microphone, a shotgun condenser microphone, a lapel microphone, or a handheld dynamic microphone? All right. We have number one, large diaphragm condenser, five, shotgun condenser, six, handheld dynamic, or a lapel microphone, four. Actually, there are two the best answer I would suggest would, oh, I chose that wrong. The best answer, no, actually, no. The best answer would be a large diaphragm condenser. Um, so uh, kudos to whoever got that. Thank you so much for voting. And uh, we appreciate that. Shotgun condenser could be used, but it wouldn't provide the widest frequency response to get the subtleties of that instrument. Um, handheld dynamic, no, you, that's a lower end quality. So we would want to go with a higher quality microphone. Lapel mic, certainly not necessarily right for that application either because we would want the higher quality of the large diaphragm condenser. Next one, let's take a look. And we got Alex is in the lead with 930 points. Let's keep moving here. Next one, what kind of microphone should the lead singer in this application use? And the tension is building. The tension is building. Oh. 
And let's check our answers. Who got it right? Dynamic handheld microphone. That's right, because you know somebody's gonna grab that thing and look <laughs> However they do when they scream into their dynamic microphone, you'll want a microphone that can handle that intensity and still provide usable audio without clipping out and actually without destroying the uh, subtle intricate inner workings of the large diaphragm condenser. So whoever chose handheld dynamic microphone right on large diaphragm condenser, that singer would be more appropriate to use that in the studio. Certainly wouldn't want to use a shotgun condenser mic or a lapel mic in that situation because of the frequency response, not the right scenario for that type of microphone. Next one. So we got Levi moves ahead with 1,507 points and Rock Bro 2. Rock Bro 2. Peace, Rock Bro. There we go. Let's take our last quiz for the day and then we're going to wrap this up. Choose the two. This is potentially two. The two best choices for this situation. You are in your podcasting studio. What would be the best microphone for the job? Six. Five, four, three, two, one. And let's test our results. We had three people said dynamic handheld. 12 people said shotgun condenser. Nine people said USB condenser. And 12 people said large diaphragm condenser. Well, as a man with 30 years experience in the realm, I would suggest that the USB condenser microphone and the large diaphragm condenser microphone would be your best choice to get you best quality audio at an affordable price. A shotgun mic would be appropriate and could do the job, but you would need an interface to be able to use those as well. Uh, of course, with the large diaphragm condenser too. But the USB, great affordable choice, gets you good high quality just by plugging into your USB port. So guys, that's it for the day. I want to thank everybody so much. Mr. Tippins, thank you so much for allowing us to go a little bit extra. We greatly appreciate that. Everybody, thank you so much. Next week, we are going to be doing a session on taking a look at effective use of virtual technologies using Zoom platform and using Zoom effectively for whatever purpose that you have. Um, we're going to have somebody from MCS joining us with that. And we are also going to take a look at science and engineering with a friend of mine by the name of Brittany, who has a not-for-profit organization that promotes STEAM and STEM. She's going to come up and teach us about electrical circuitry on one of our next episodes. Israel, thanks so much for joining us on Gathering STEAM today, my brother. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Earl, thank you so much. I see he's gone. I've had to step out, but we want to thank him for everything that he is doing. There he is. What's up, brother? Hey, thanks for joining us. And if you guys want to jump in there real quick on your webcam and say hello, that would be awesome. Y'all have a wonderful weekend and enjoy your holiday. Bye, guys. Take care, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Did you enjoy this today? Hopefully you learned a lot. I would say uh, that's true. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's what we like to hear. Thanks, hopefully, guys. Hopefully you guys go ahead and apply that knowledge. And we get to see you out there being the next YouTube superstar, making billions and billions of dollars. Here. You guys are my retirement plan, right? So whenever you're rich and well, famous... Well, I don't know about being the next YouTube superstar, but sure. We'll apply the knowledge. Well, what you do is if you yes. do become the next YouTube superstar, you can hire me to make you coffee and pay me a lot of money to make you coffee before your show. There you go. $18,000 for a cup of okay. coffee. That'll do. 18, 18, 18 grand a month, you think? That'll do. I love it. All right, guys. This is funny. I'll... Hey, thanks so much, guys. You have a wonderful and blessed holiday. Take care now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, share, and subscribe. You have been watching Gathering Steam. I am Mr. E. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great holiday. We'll see you next, oh, two weeks with our next session on electronic circuitry and uh, then another session on utilizing virtual communication tools. I'm Mr. E for Israel and for Mr. Earl, for NCS and everybody at the Fairfax County School District. Thanks so much for watching and all of our students. Thanks for, for hanging in there with us and staying safe. 
and joining us on Gathering Steam.